You are listening to the Fire Rescue Athlete Podcast with your host, Aaron Zamzow. Hey everybody, Aaron Zamzow here. Welcome to the Fire Rescue Athlete Podcast. I am your host, Aaron Zamzow. I am a strength and conditioning coordinator, a fitness trainer. I've been in the fitness industry for over 25 years. I'm also a firefighter EMT and I've uh, been a training officer full-time and also on-call paid uh, for over 15 years. Welcome to the Fire Rescue Athlete Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. We're here to talk about issues facing the health and wellness of the fire service, how to stay fit for duty, how to stay more mobile, how to stay um, you know, more mentally prepared, and uh, become an all-around better fire rescue athlete. So thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, you can hear the clock hopefully uh, churning in the background there. I have a bird clock, and there's a long story behind that. But if you just heard a bird chirp, uh, you are not hearing things. That is a clock that my grandmother gave me. So anyways, as I start the podcast, grandma chimes in. And, uh, you know, with with the chiming of uh, that clock, you might thought, God, I, I'm hearing things. And it's very fitting that that happened when it did, because today what we're going to talk about a little bit is mental health and what what does that do to us as first responders and, and how does our body respond? And, and uh, just talk a little bit about this thing we call resiliency. And in the fire service right now, there is a lot of talk about it. About five or five to 10 years ago, uh, when I first started writing about fitness and when I first got involved with uh, presenting at conferences, you know, everyone talked about functional fitness for firefighters and it was big, you know, er everywhere you were with fun functional fitness. And we define that, um, you know, now I think as you're listening to the Fire Rescue Athlete podcast, you, you kind of understand that a little bit that we need to train like, uh, like, you know, prepare for the fire ground and functionally, uh, you know, have exercises and a fitness program that's tailored to that. But the other aspect of that that's gaining a lot of popularity and that a lot of people are starting to talk about is the mental resiliency part. Um, and so you'll hear this resilient, resilient, resilient all over the place. And, and we, we've we now been, I think, doing a pretty good job of understanding and talking about the mental health side of our job. And so today what I wanted to do, this is the first of three podcasts that I'm going to do uh, that talks about what is a resilient first responder? How can you build and maintain resiliency um, in in the fire service uh, as a first responder? You know, what are the things that you should be doing? What are some things that you can look for? And really the first one that I want to do and what I wanted to really address today was what does that mean? What is the definition of a resilient firefighter? Um, this has been motivated by a lot of different things. I just did an article for Firehouse that will come out in September. September, I believe, of 2020, uh, in that issue about what resiliency is and how, uh, you know, kind of the correlation between fitness and and mental health. And uh, excited for that to hit, but it really got me to do a lot of research on this topic. And I, and I thought, you know, there's a lot of things that I'm discovering, and I just wanted to share them on and pass them on to you. And one was, I, you know, I kept going, well, what the heck is resilient? Like, what does it really mean? And if you Google it, which you probably or you might be doing right now, you know, Webster's defines it one way is resilience is, you know, the ability to, to cover, recover or adjust easily uh, to misfortune or change. All right. So you kind of think about that. You're like, OK, I can see how that kind of would would adapt to what we do in the fire service. Um, the Department of Defense has a really good definition. They define it as the ability to withstand, recover and grow in the face of stressors in changing demands. And if you look at, you know, soldiers and uh, military, that that really uh, hits home. And I think that that's a, a, a very good definition um, for them. Um, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services defines it as the ability to withstand, adapt to and recover from adversity and stress. And, you know, basically, as first responders, I kind of look at those different things and say, yeah, I, I like those definitions. Uh, I really think as first responders the definition of becoming a resilient first responder is the ability of, of any individual in, 
you know, in, in the fire service or first responder realm to bounce back from traumatic events and cope with the stresses of the job and deal with these stresses in a healthy way. Tradition in the fire service says um, we probably don't do that very healthy. We use a lot of sarcasm. We use a lot of humor. Uh, there is a lot of alcohol consumed, uh, even in drugs. Um, you know, I think that we we have a tendency to reach for those. And, um, you know, starting to do a lot of research on this, it's, it's common. And, uh, you know, a lot of the things that we do as firefighters, and if you look at our union events and, um, you know, on-call paid and volunteer fire departments, we do a lot of social gatherings where there's a lot of alcohol. Um, you know, one, that's part of the social aspect, aspect but two, um, you know, I wonder if there, there has some things uh, behind it. There, I wonder if there's some, some of the, the trauma that we've seen and stresses, and, and I think that's how we kind of have learned in the fire service to deal and cope. Um, you know, one thing personally that I found uh, through the, the course of joining the fire service now, uh, I'll, let me back up a little bit and say that I, I worked out in the, I, I should say the general population, but I, I worked out in the fire, the fitness service in the fitness field, working in health clubs and, and training athletes, uh, both pro and, and non-pro and, and the general population for 10 or 15 years before I got involved in fire service. So when I came in, I was a little bit older. I was 35, 36 years old. So I had a little bit different approach and, and uh, view of the fire service, um, you know, when I came in. And one of the things that I found that I had difficulty doing is transitioning from the firehouse back to real life. And I think a lot of us, if you step back and evaluate your life, um, you'll maybe find some of those patterns, um, especially after traumatic shift and, and a tr couple of tra traumatic calls. I found that there are some things that, um, you know, I just uh, had difficulty dealing with personally. Uh, and it, I didn't think I was affected, but my significant other, my family members would kind of start calling me out on it. Like, hey, that's, that's a little bit different for you. Um, and I think a lot of us can can relate to that. And uh, and if you can't, maybe you need to evaluate. And I'm not saying this is a bad thing at all. Uh, we're just here to talk a little bit about it. And um, you know, I'm I'm trying to share some of my stories, and hopefully you you'll do some reflection on on you know what 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 does resilience mean to you, and and maybe how has the job affected you mentally? How has it affected you socially? How has it affected you in your relationships? And you know identifying maybe that there are some things that you are holding on to or, or, or trying to, to use to cope. Um, I've had some great discussions with, uh, you know, people that are using a fire rescue fitness. Um, that's where a lot of this stuff stems from fire rescue fitness.com is a website that I have that we have workout programs that thousands of firefighters are using all over the country. And I've had some great feedback and email conversations and coaching of individuals that they found that there's a lot deeper issue as to why they couldn't make fitness progress or why they ate and did the habits that they did. Um, you know, some people would reach for sweets as a means to deal with the stress of the job. Uh, sometimes we reach for those sweets for energy. Sometimes we reach for them for, uh, you know, because of the effect that that sugar gives us, it doesn't allow us or it gives us the opportunity to kind of avoid what we're really thinking and feeling. So I think, Sometimes when you step back and start to evaluate how the trauma that we see and how, um, you know, the, the stresses of our job really, really affect your life, I think that's the first step in that. And I think that's one of the first steps in becoming a more resilient person, a more resilient firefighter. So, you know, getting back to the definition of, of resiliency in first responders, it's the ability of you, of the individual to bounce back from trauma and cope with the stresses of the job and deal with them in a healthy manner. Um, and of course, I my, one of the healthy ways that I deal with it is uh, fitness. I work out to clear my mind. I work out to help me uh, cope. I help. It, it really helps to uh, reset me. You know, my my significant other and my family. You know, they they tell me a lot of times they know when I haven't had a chance to work out, and a lot of times they support me just taking some time to myself and going to get that workout done because they know how it affects me uh, mentally and how much, you know, I shouldn't say how much better of a person I are, but I, you know, I, I think I'm uh, a lot, a little more relaxed. I'm able to listen and I'm, I'm able to, um, you know, have a better relationship because of fitness. And, 
you know, that got me researching into the connection between resiliency and fitness and mental health. And we'll talk more about that in a couple other podcasts. But for today, what I really wanted you to understand is the definition of it. Um, think about how the traumas, the stresses of the job maybe have affected you mentally uh, and, and to at least start to look at that side of things uh, and maybe dig deeper into maybe maybe that's what's holding you back. Why, why you're not healthy is because you drink beer every night. And why do you drink beer every night? Because I know what you're thinking, because it tastes good. I'll, I'll give you that. All right. But um, why are you not taking a walk with the family? Why are you not going for a 30 minute workout? Why do you reach for that? sugar instead. And, and, and maybe you'll start to find some patterns. Um, you know, I, the trauma and the stress of the job f- affects us in ways I don't think we all realize. Um, one thing that was pointed out to me is, and I'll share this experience. We had a very traumatic call. We had a young boy pass away. Um, we actually had a car, uh, jump the, a curb, travel 300 feet and hit a family that was picnicking. And, um, you know, a, a little boy died in that and, and, and there were other injuries and um, the car was driven by a, a, a certain brand of car. And for the longest time, for some reason, I had this every time I'd see that kind, kind of car, I would just I would hate that car. And I always say I hate that that brand. I hate that kind of car. And, um, you know, it took about six years. and I'm like, why do I really hate that car? It's actually a really good car. It's very reliable. A uh, great gas mileage. You could probably figure out what kind of car it is. But, but I think I, you know, as I step back and look at it, I'm like, God, I never realized, you know, somehow that brought back a feeling in me, um, you know, from the trauma and the, uh, of that particular um, call. And, um, you know, and I think if we really dig deep, you'll start to find some things. I've had uh, great heart to heart conversations with paramedics that have said, you know, my relationship started to suffer when I became a paramedic. Um, you know, now they look back and, 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 and they can look back at their career. They can look back at certain situations and realize, you know, hey, when I when I joined the fire service, I didn't transition very well from, you know, the firehouse to not being in the firehouse. And my relationships suffered with certain friends. And um, I think that's part of the mental aspect of um, of the job. And being able to recognize them, I think, is a huge part of being a resilient firefighter and a resilient first responder. Um, resilient first responders are able to identify and then make, uh, really good, healthy decisions to, um, combat them or to deal with them, uh, you know, are able to communicate better with their significant others and their family members and those that are close to them, uh, about some of these situations and, uh, what they're feeling. So, um, first and foremost, I hope this kind of gives you a little insight as what is really resilient, right? What is a resilient first first responder? I think it ties together not only the physical aspects that you're able to deal with the stresses of a job physically, but you're able to positively identify and uh, deal with the the mental side of the job in a healthy way. And, um, you know, as I started to dig into this a little bit more, I really started to think about, oh, boy. Maybe this is why I felt this way, or maybe this is why I, I deal, um, you know, I, I respond this way to certain things. So, um, you know, I hope this this gives you a chance to kind of start looking in the mirror a little bit. Uh, what's coming up, right? What what's the, How do we follow this? So now we have a definition. The next part is uh, I want to talk about how fitness can really help deal with the mental health side of the job. Uh, and then the third podcast, we're going to put it all together and, and figure out some some positive ways that, and some things that you can take from this to deal with the stresses of the job that will last your career and uh, will also will, you will feel the effects of right away. Um, you know, and, and you you can use these tools and uh, suggestions to uh, really really help you become more resilient on the mental side and on the on the physical side, but. Um, you know, lastly, what I wanted to talk about too is, is why do we need to become resilient? Okay. So I think you can kind of see through, um, you know, the speech as we, as I say, as I've been talking, I think you can see why, but, you know, as you go through the, the, the fire service or as you become a, you know, first responder, as you, as you progress through your career, 
resilient responders, they have more compassion. And I think you've always, you've probably all been on those calls where we're like, whoa, you know, that wasn't very compassionate. And, and you know, like sometimes your compassion meter is at zero. And I think that's part of building resiliency helps you deal with that, the compassion side of things. It helps you cope and care for yourselves and those around you. Um, it, it obviously then, it, it it actually can affect your ment your your not only your mental health but your physical health. So you're maybe less sick. Your immune response is a little bit better, which is very important right now when we're in the midst of COVID. Uh, I also think that the more resilient you are, the better your your job satisfaction is, and uh, the longer you you uh, have a better career. Um, and and I just think you'll be a, a a generally more healthy and happy person learning how to deal with the mental aspects of the job in a more positive way. So uh, I know it kind of rambled around a little bit, but I just want you to think about what what is resilient, right? And and how can you become more resilient? And why do we need to become more resilient in the fire service? I mean, um, you know, the stuff we see, the trauma that we see, we, we don't think it affects us, but uh, it, it does. And it, it affects us, our relationships. Um, you know, you might get sad, you might feel grief, you might get mad, uh, and, and that might cause you to reach for sugars or unhealthy things like alcohol and drugs. And, uh, what we want you to do is if you can identify that, Hey, I'm feeling these things probably due to the stress of the job. So what can I do now to, um, you know, combat them and, and deal with them in healthy ways. So anyways, thanks so much for listening. It was a, it was a little bit of a ramble, but I think with good cause. So now when you start to hear resilient, start to understand why that's so important, what that means, and uh, stay tuned for how we can deal with it. I'll give you a hint. Exercise can really become the wonder drug of the fire service when you look at the different physical health issues we face and the mental health um, uh, issues that we face. So with that being said, tune in soon. I'm going to do the second podcast uh, on this. And uh, I hope this gives you some stuff to think about and chew on. And please spread the word. Let me know if this helps. And also let me know what other topics you want to hear on the Fire Rescue Athlete Podcast. Hey, everybody, stay safe, stay healthy, stay positive. Tune in again soon. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the Fire Rescue Athlete Podcast with your host, Aaron Zamzow. Please tune in again soon for more fitness tips for fire rescue athletes.